Guys, in this video, let us look at aqueous humor formation. So, look at this, guys. Um, here you have the lens of the eye. Here you have the iris. Here you have the anterior chamber in front of the iris. And behind that small thing, what you have between the behind the iris, whatever you have is the posterior chamber. Okay, here the aqueous humor is uh, generated and it comes out of the pupil, goes into the anterior chamber. Right, and it gets drained into the trabecular meshwork, and the, there's another uveoscleral outflow. Two outflow paths are there for anterior um, for the aqueous humor. So basically, <clears throat> if the aqueous humor cannot drain, okay, so that will lead to increased intraocular pressure that can lead to glaucoma. Okay, so if um, there are other issues also, if uh, aqueous humor is less, then what will happen? The intraocular pressure will be less, right? And that will be hypotony, right? Isn't the same thing? That is hypotony. So basically, you need this uh, aqueous humor for uh, giving lot of nutrients to the cornea and also giving nutrients to the lens. So aqueous humor will give all the nutrients to the cornea and the lens, right? So, who is making this aqueous humor? It is the ciliary body. Okay, ciliary body is making the aqueous humor. So, here you can see here the ciliary body is all this. So, internal limiting membrane, non pigmented epithelium, pigmented epithelium, stroma, superciliary lamina. So, the ciliary body, whatever they have shown here, this entire thing, right, that is the um, this choroid, whatever is coming in front. So, the part of the choroid which is projecting front, right, that becomes ciliary body. This will make the aqueous. So, ciliary body is the forward continu continuation of choroid. So, aqueous humor is derived from the plasma which is within the capillary network of the ciliary processes. Okay, from the um, capillaries inside what will you have in the capillary network of the ciliary processes you will have inside plasma. From this plasma you will get aqueous humor. Okay, this is aqueous humor coming out of your capillaries. See, the rate of aqueous uh, production is 2.3 microliter per minute. Okay, micro, micro, microliter per minute, 2.3, 2.3, 2.3 microliter per minute. Remember this. And the mechanisms are ultrafiltration, diffusion and secretion. Okay, so let us look at these. Um, you have to write these three words, ultrafiltration. So, most of the plasma substances, they pass out of the capillary wall and lose connective tissue. Where will they come and uh, accumulate? This dial dialysate, it accumulates behind the pigmented and non pigmented uh, non pigmented epithelium of ciliary process okay let us see where this is so here you have the non pigmented and pigmented epithelium somewhere here it will come and accumulate what will accumulate the dialysate okay then this ultrafiltration is over then secretion so this dialysate from the plasma it is transported into the pigment epith epithelium now it has it was behind the pigment epithelium now it has come into the pigment epithelium so, you are having some active transports. Remember here, active transportation is occurring. Okay. So, some substances are actively transported. Look at this. Sodium, chloride, potassium, ascorbic acid, amino acids, bicarbonates, everything is getting uh, secreted. Okay. Now, after this active transport of these substances from the non-pigmented ciliary epithelium, now an osmotic gradient is there. Right. So, that osmotic gradient will anyways... Uh, cause ultrafiltration and diffusion. See, sodium came out, right? Then what will happen? Water will come out, right? And as and when this aqueous humor is getting drained out, right? So, there will be enough diffusional exchange with surrounding structures. So, anterior chamber aqueous will resemble the plasma more closely than the posterior chamber aqueous humor. Anyways, that is uh, next part. So, what did you understand? Ultrafiltration, first of all, because of ultrafiltration, the plasma substances come out of the capillary wall and uh, it will form dialysate behind this pigmented epithelium. Then because of this active uh, transport, secretion happens and lot of things are secreted like uh, sodium, chlo chloride, potassium, ascorbic acid, amino acids, bicarbonates, etc. Now, as in when these things are thrown out, what happens? Diffusion occurs, right? So, the osmotic gradient will, what will happen? Uh, movement of water will happen into the posterior posterior chamber. Sodium is primarily responsible for the movement of water into posterior chamber. That is diffusion. So, now your aqueous humor got formed. Three things. What were the three things? Ultrafiltration, secretion, diffusion. So, we just looked at the formation of aqueous humor. Look at how the aqueous humor formation is controlled. See, there is some diurnal variation in intraocular pressure. So, it indicates that there is some factor that influences the formation. So, they are telling about vasopressin, adenyl cyclase, etc. And they have told um, 
level of blood pressure etc osmotic pressure in etc okay then coming to drainage of the aqueous humor so basically how does it drain out there are two things one is trabecular meshwork the other is via uveoscleral outflow so trabecular meshwork from there it goes to schlemm's canal right then you have basically it goes to the episcleral veins etc coming to this uh, and uh, the other way you have the unconventional one that is the uveoscleral outflow this is just 20 to 30% of the uh, drainage okay uveoscleral outflow again into the finally into the venous circulation of the choroid and sclera so they are calling it as uveoscleral outflow here you can see the conventional outflow into the trabecular meshwork from there into the schlemm's canal right look at this one here into the trabecular meshwork into the schlemm's canal from there into some veins that is you have the uh, so many veins here aqueous vein then here you have the intrascleral plexus and then into the episcleral vein from the episcleral vein to the anterior uh, anterior ciliary vein okay so that's how it is draining this is the conventional one only where is the other way the other way directly into the ciliary body it's going backwards kind of a thing into the ciliary body supracoroidal space and then venous circulation of the choroid and sclera okay let's why at the trabecular or conventional outflow you have the passive filter mechanisms in which you have something called as evacuation and then you have active so you have passive and active for trabecular conventional outflow uveoscleral outflow unconventional look at this what this vacuolation is they have shown some photo here vacuolation theory of aqueous transport across the inner wall of the schlemm's canal so what is happening here here you have the trabecular meshwork the schlemm's canal from the schlemm's canal it's going to aqueous vein so this they have zoomed here right 1 2 3 4 5 so you can see there is some kind of a vacuole forming here looks like which is then taking the aqueous humor out into the schlemm's canal so vacuolation theory of aqueous transport across the inner wall of schlemm's canal non vacuolated stage this is the non vacuolated stage early a stage of infolding of basal surface of the endothelial cell then here you have the stage of macrovacular structure formation the macrovacular structure formation then here you have the stage of vacuolar transcellular channel formation transcellular channel formation and then you have the stage of occlusion of the basal infolding so it's kind of taking it in a vacuole and dropping it there looks like they don't want this uh, accretion theory now it was a most accepted till recent past only outflow as such we are not going much in detail but anyways if you want to know here in passive filter mechanism you have some leaky pores in endothelium then you have the contractile microfilaments then you have the sondermans channels then you have this vacuolation theory which you saw then coming to active pump mechanism into the trabecular uh, outflow you have the aqueous outflow pump right then you have the trabecular meshwork aqueous valve mechanism outflow pump systems there humor flow from schlemm's canal to collector's channel and episcleral veins then you have some aqueous veins because of this pressure gradient it will push out okay so guys in this video we wanted to actually focus on aqueous humor formation it is uh, formed by it is created by the ciliary body in the posterior chamber it is released right it is created there and uh, it comes out of the pupillary margin and goes into the anterior chamber and drains right so basically it is produced at 2.3 microliter per minute and uh, the mechanisms are ultra filtration uh, from where from the uh, plasma which is within the capillary wall the dialysate will come out right it will come out and form the dialysate behind the pigmented epithelium then um, it is transported into the pigmented epithelium by the uh, by secretion active transport sodium etc are actively thrown out and now when sodium comes out it will bring out water that is diffusion so everything has come now and it has formed the aqueous humor in the posterior chamber so how uh, this uh, how is this control what is the mechanism to control aqueous formation because they know that there is a diurnal variation of the aqueous humor formation so they think that there are some factors which control the aqueous humor for humor formation like vasopressin adenyl cyclase etc and um, also the blood pressure etc will control it outflow finally how will it go out there are two mechanisms trabecular meshwork and the uveous cleral outflow which is the unconventional outflow trabecular conventional outflow you have pa passive filter mechanisms and active 
pump mechanism in that you have an evacuation theory okay and in this uh, active pump and all you can say pressure gradient etc will push it out so this is the vacuolation theory where you can see the vacuole getting formed from the trabecular mesh work and releasing the aqueous into the schlems canal okay from the schlems canal it will go into the aqueous vein from there into the episcleral vein okay so that was the vacuolation theory that's all guys we are done in this video about uh, aqueous humor formation our focus was mainly on the formation in this video right so just remember this the normal intraocular pressure is from 10 to 21 mm of mercury so 22 above you can see it is raised intraocular pressure okay that's all for now guys bye bye